نوایت الاربعین نوایت الاعتکاف نوایت الخلوه نوایت العزل نوایت الریاضه نوایت السلوک لنده تعالی العظیم فی هده المسجد يقول مولانا الشيخ مولانا الشيخ سيز that who is the زاهد who is the ascetic what how we can define an ascetic is that the one that he left the dunya or is he the one that left the pleasure, his, his worldly pleasures? And he said, Allah says that the whole dunya doesn't weigh a wing of a mosquito to him. Is the one that left dunya is not that one who is really a Zahid. He might be partially Zahid. He might be in the in his way of approach is a Zahid, ascetic. But the real ascetic to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that face a sin and back up from it means if he sees something wrong and prevent himself from falling into it is considered more ascetic than the one who left dunya completely because we might he says that we might worship we might do our prayers it's easy we might fast is easy we might pray nafil is easy <coughs> but to face a a sin and back up is not easy because shaitan and his army trying to prevent you from refrain abstain. abstain from a sin they want you to commit the sin so they put all their powers that they can possibly put that they will pull your leg into falling into that sin if this was 1,000 years ago and one, even 1,400 years ago from time of Prophet وسلم, he is trying to teach Sahaba to abstain from falling into sins what you think about today where anywhere you move there is a sin it's so easy to find today forbiddens are like shower they shower like rain on us and to leave one of them he said is you will be rewarded as if you have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for many many years Allah will give you reward on leaving one sin equal to rewards might be that giving you for all your life on your worship because it's difficult it's not so easy people think it's easy and sins are are of different types 
today everywhere there is mixing of different genders so it's very easy very simple to face sins from both sides right? so that where he says that to be an ascetic is when you leave this kind of sins he said whoever face a, a, a sin and he leave it and wherever he face something that he been ordered to do and he do it that man is the perfect man that person is the perfect person He said Sharia is two kinds, is, the, is of two divisions. What Prophet prohibited and what Prophet allowed or command to do. This is the whole concept of Islam is based on these two. Al-Haram ubayin wa al-Halal ubayin. Haram Prophet showed it and Halal Prophet showed it. So it's very clear. You cannot say, oh, I didn't see it. Oh, I cannot, I did not see it. No, Prophet Wasallam described in Sharia what you are allowed to do and what you are not allowed to do. He said that from one of his visions, Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, in seclusion, he said, if a, a human being, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, owns a huge amount of wealth, might be the richest in the world, and he came one day and said, I'm giving all this fi sabillah, in Allah's way, to poor people. I don't want anything. I'm, I, am, I want to be zahid, ascetic in that. I don't want anything from the dunya pleasure. I'm giving it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he distributes whatever he has. Angels are going to write on the right side rewards for that person endless rewards they are writing for him that he has spent his wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how is big that Someone they say, oh, I, I own this, I own this, I own this. Many people own a lot today in the Gulf. And they are so stingy to give in Allah's way. And if you own, they, uh, they want to give, they give only to show. It's a show off. To say, this person gave this. You look today, you go to a mosque, and you see a plaque outside written, this mosque is being built by Al-Muhsin Al-Kabir. The great... Uh, the great... Uh, generous one. So and so. You can see in the Arab world, like that. You might have it here also. That is a show-off. Let's say like that. Angels were right for that person that he gave in Allah's way and they were right rewards, endless rewards. And it will be written by the pen that Allah gave to them. What kind of pen? We don't know. But they were right. Means they write with something. 
that what we call al qalam the pen so they write with a pen but heavenly pen all the rewards for that person but he said the person who follows what Allah ordered and abstain from what Allah forbid and prevent himself from even one sin angels would not write are not allowed to write that person reward but Allah's pen without referring back to angels Kalamul Qudra that is the a pen of power coming from the ocean of power he, that pen will be writing with no account no hisab no account for that act that he did what Allah wants and what his prophet wants angels has no interference they don't know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving reward to that servant so Allah gave human being a lot of things that they are so simple even you don't own the whole world even if you own the whole world the, own the whole world and you give it in the way of Allah Allah still giving those people who doesn't have anything if they stop themselves from doing a sin to be rewarded with endless reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the pen of power will be writing their rewards and the angels will not interfere he said even the angels of heavens and earth if all of them they come to write the reward for that person it will not be it will be like nothing compared to the rewards that Allah is giving to that person without the knowledge of angels <coughs> this is the for the one that he leaves forbidden and do what Allah ordered to do. Man yatruk al manhiyat, who leaves the forbidden, whenever he sees it, and he follow al ma'murat, the orders that Prophet, the obligations that Prophet has showed us. He said, how to, how to be able to do that he say that you have to think and say to your ego oh my ego today i'm going to have a a day that like people today they say oh today i we want to run five miles tomorrow we rest they run five miles. It's very hectic, isn't it? Yeah. Then in the evening comes, they rest. So you have to tell your ego, oh, my ego, today I'm going, sorry, but I'm going to run five miles, symbolic, five miles in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tomorrow I give you your chance. But today, I have given promise that I'm going to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ego will not at that time get worried. So they let <laughs> it let you. No problem, you go ahead, do it. Then you do it. Next day come, say, oh, my ego, I'm sorry. But also, I can add one more day. Tomorrow I give you your chance. Then you go another five miles. Because when you rest at night from your, your running, jogging, mm -hmm. what happened? You 
you gain back your strength and energy for the next day. So you can run next day. So when you run five miles first day, next day you run five miles, the third day you run six miles. Is that? True. Then after two, three days you run ten miles. And you keep doing like that. Slowly, slowly, it increases. So the tricks to the ego is one day I will do this, next day you do double. The third day you do less. By this way, he said, for 40 days, if you are in debate with your ego for 40 days and you trained your ego to accept that you are going in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after 40 days, shaitan has no power on you. Shaitan's power will drop down because the ego is being trained not to listen to shaitan, it's trained to listen to you. Now, our ego is trained to listen to shaitan, it's not lis listening to you or to Allah or to Prophet. At that time, our ego will be able to accept. And that's why awliyaullah are the ones that they were, they, are, they, they, they did ride their ego like riding a horse. But for us, our ego is riding us. That's, people, uh, that's why people get angry. That's why people like to be famous, just bad characteristics. That's why the people get envy to others, get jealous, get greediness, get stinginess. All these bad characteristics, the ego is, is accumulating and uh, building up itself and it's very difficult to take it away. That's what happened to those who consider themselves that they are something in any field. And that's why they call themselves professor, doctor, Masters, Sheikhs, Khalifa. You are Sheikh? You are Sheikh? Are you Sheikh? No. No. He's not. So, but if you ask someone else, you say yes. In front of you, he says no. But as soon as you close your eyes or you leave the place, he becomes big Sheikh sitting and giving lectures. Sickness. Sickness. You want to give lectures, it's okay, you give. You bring people to, to the sheikh, not to yourself. That's the problem. That they, 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 bring them, they bring people to themselves and they make themselves this big uh, statue and, and <coughs> telling people, oh, this is my statue, look at it is nice, bow to it. This is the pharaonic, pharaonic uh, character. What he said, Ana Rabbukumul A'la. I am your highest God for you, to his people. These people who are, they think themselves they are something, they build a big statue for themselves and tell people bow to that statue. This is me. If you are statue, you don't talk, you don't like Sayyidina Ibrahim, he came to all these statues, cut their necks. And then he left the axe, that he cut all the necks of the statues, he left the, the biggest one, huh? Yeah. and put the axe on his neck. Too many, today we have too many statues like that. In any tariqa, not only in Tariqa, in, 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 all, in the religion, in the whole religion, these, these people who are considered themselves scholars, they are very uh, uh, balloons inflated with uh, uh, satanic uh, helium. So, uh, in Tariqa you have a lot of them. They consider themselves senior Murid Sheikhs. So he put the axe on the top one, on the big one, 
And people came and they said, who did that? Man fa'ala hadha bi alihatina. Who did that for our gods? And they said, one person, you call lahu Ibrahim. They say he is Ibrahim. Call him. They called him. He's young. They said, man fa'ala hadha bi alihatina ya Ibrahim. Who did that to our God? He said, this one. <laughs> <laughs> the big one. The big one that he has the axe on his neck. They said, how? You should ask him. Don't believe me, ask him. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask him. They, he doesn't talk, he doesn't speak. It's a statue. The sickness, the reflection of a human being is that statue that it is in them. That sculpture. That is the ego that's controlling the whole system, the whole body, the whole, the, 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 our, our behaviors is reflected on that statue to be the, the biggest, the mummies. He's a mummy. He's already finished, mummy. No, no, still he can speak and talk. His mummy, he's already wrapped. No, no, he can speak, worship him. So that's the problem. That Iblis and his army is all of them against us in order that to fall into, into sins and mistakes. And Awliyaullah are trying to teach us the way to trick the ego. Trick it slowly. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot stop the ego from controlling you, except slowly by time. One day you do something. Next day, give the ego something to be happy. You cannot every day coming against against you. Are not we are not that yet in that level. Awliya Allah can, but we cannot. So we, he said we have to take our time. He said, like someone, he is, there is a competition in running. 100 meters and five miles. Compare the speed between the two, what you see. The one that who is running 100 meters, going so fast. The one who is running five miles, is going so slow. He said the one who the one who is running a short distance he will be running quickly, so he can do many things, and he will get the reward with that speed that he is doing. But that's very, very quick, and it's finished. But the one who is doing five miles slowly, 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 means he is stretching it all over a long period of time, so his ego will be trained for five miles, five miles, five miles, five miles. So he say, take things slowly against the ego. Don't take it so quick, because when you take it so quick, it will tire you quickly. Like one running 100 meters, you will get so tired. But the one who is slowly, slowly going five miles, he reach at the end, but like a turtle, but don't stop. Keep doing it, even you are walking. But keep doing daily, 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 slowly, slowly. That's what Allah wants, and that's why He said, "Awliya Allah." They tell their students to put three nails, and we said it this last week. Three nails on their forehead. One nail is means 
If they tell you, dig to seven hours, you get your trust, dig. Don't say, I cannot. It's impossible. It's really impossible. But don't use your mind. When you use your mind, you stop. Keep slowly digging. First day, one meter. Second day, two meters. Third day, three meters. And keep digging as much as you can. So this is what is needed from us in order to achieve the strength of worshipness, a continuous worshipness, that we have to do daily our awrad that they gave to us. If you cannot do it all, he said, that's why they said there are three levels of awrad. First, second, and third. The first one, let's say, is 1,500 Allah Allah. It's not for beginners. Second, for Musta'ad, ready, 2,500 and 2,500, 5,000 times. For Murid, 10,000 times. He said, but all of them, don't say, I will do 10,000 tomorrow, I cannot do, because it's too much. Do 1,500. If you cannot do the 10,000, do 1,500. But daily. Go slowly. Don't go fast until you reach that level that you can go fast. And, and I will end with that. Today we learned that we have to go slowly in everything to trick our ego in order to abstain from falling into sins and to prevent ourselves from listening to shaitan we trick our ego by letting it to be happy by going slowly. Don't go quick until we achieve the level that they want us to achieve. Wa min Allahi tawfiq wa hurmatil fatiha.